It's no way that I just got off work. All I did was ask you to clean up and it's how the house looks. Like, are you serious? Why do you got shoes all over the floor? Chips and woods on the couch, grits on the couch. I can't like, get a break. Can you go on, man? All you Can get you is a break. All you get is a break. I'm like, what? All you get is a break. You ain't go to no job interviews. I done filled out your resume, switched your resume for you. So what did you have me sit there wasting my time for filling out a resume if you wasn't going to go? You wanted to do that. You wanted to but you said that you was going to go. That's beside the point right now. Why is it chips on the floor and food on the couch and stuff? You on roaches? And you just sit here with your feet kicked up like you done just been talking about you can't get a break. Ain't that all you get? You clean up. You clean up. You so much I was just at work all day. What am I coming home cleaning up for? You need to clean up. What you been doing all day? Besides eating chips and grits and leaving them right here. not You can't even get up and throw your stuff away. The trash still over here. Trash not taken out. Okay. Wow. Napkins on the couch. Like, are you for real? Uh, wow. Wow. Okay. Ross family, let's dive into this situation, okay? In this video... The woman comes home from work, exhausted, only to find her boyfriend lounging on the couch with his feet up, surrounded by potato chip bags, a half-smoked blunt on the arm of the chair, the house is a mess, several pairs of shoes laying around, and he hasn't lifted a finger to do anything, even though she asked him to. When she confronts him, his response is, can I get a break sometimes? But here's the thing. The real issue isn't even that the house is still messy or that he didn't clean. The real issue runs much deeper than that. Let's talk about this. We all go through different seasons in life. There's going to be seasons where you're up, seasons where you're down, seasons where you are happy, times where you're going through depression. Each one of these seasons shapes you into a different version of yourself along this journey. This man could very well be in a tough place in his life, not having a job, feeling powerless, fatigued. And these are all symptoms that stem from depression. And as men, we're often not taught to express these uh, feelings openly. And sometimes we don't even recognize them within ourselves in the moment. The major problem isn't just his inactivity, okay, his failure to, to do the work to help out, uh, or his need for a break. The core issue is the unwillingness to communicate effectively and work together. Why is he not saying, listen, love, I just got a lot on my mind right now. Give me a break. I get it, I've been home all day, but I'm not feeling my best. That way she can understand he's going through something and she doesn't continue to harp on it. So the first person to fail to communicate was him. He knows what's expected of him. He could have even sent her a message so she was up on what was happening. Listen, baby, I know I was supposed to clean. I didn't really do that today. I'm really not feeling up to it. I'll make it up to you. At least you can understand what your partner's going through. But he just simply asked for a break. And it kind of sounds like uh, you can, I can look in his face and, and see that this person's saying more than what he's saying. Okay? But the way he's handling it, he's looking for her to just assume this or know that. And you just can't expect somebody to really understand it. You have to say what it is. All right. So she didn't notice his mannerisms in that moment and say, OK, he's saying more than he just needs a break. Maybe he's going through a lot. He already didn't clean. Instead of sitting here trying to fuss at a grown man like he's a child, I'm just going to clean. No need to sit here arguing with everybody because it's not going to get the house clean. Or she could just go to the room and, and don't clean. But the simple fact is, if a person is not your husband, you still have the choice to say, this is not the man I want to marry. And if he's not displaying husband qualities, you might have to make that decision. All right. Um, if a person can't give a hundred due to maybe stress or, or mental challenges or injury, it's crucial that the other person steps up. Um, what we see here is a man who hears her complaints sees her frustrations and does nothing to address it and instead he makes excuses okay uh, he even says well if you want if you want to clean so much then you clean that's very counterproductive okay that's deflection um real love goes beyond words okay and affection it's about cooperation working together being willing to step up if you're in a relationship where one person refuses to communicate or do their part it creates an, an imbalance that erodes the relationship love is working together especially in difficult times. If your partner's struggling, you should be willing to help them or shoulder the burden, not just sit back and watch them, you know, struggle. 
Um, when a person is not pulling their weight, it doesn't just affect chores. It affects the whole relationship. Relationships thrive on when both partners are working together towards a common goal. When one person is complacent, it drags everything down. It isn't about traditional roles, um, who should be doing what. It's about doing whatever it takes to help your partner because you understand that you're a team. Okay, he's at home all day. He could clean the house and do something productive. Uh, show that you're in this together. And the fact is, it's not much in there. It's a, a couple of shoes, um, a blanket. I mean, these things could be cleaned up, I promise you, in five minutes. But the clutter speaks to the clutter in his mind. Okay? Um, and just because a house is messy, just because you ask the person to clean, um, if they don't follow it, it may just come off as disobedient and they don't care. But it, it often could be more to that. So you really have to find out what's going on with your partner. And this is what it means by, you know, when they can't give 100, you step up and try to meet them halfway, right? Um, the way she came in talking to him, uh, it was not uplifting, even though she has every right to be upset. Um, I would challenge you ladies that when a, when a man does not live up to your expectations, when he fails to do what you ask of him, um, even when you're upset, you still have to go about this in a nurturing, nurturing way. Maybe ask if he's okay. Maybe ask if it's, is it something you can do to help him be more effective because you thought you made yourself clear, right? Um, offer encouraging words. Um, but she's going into this kind of lecturing and fussing at him, right? She should say, baby, listen, I need you. I believe in you. When I ask for something from you, I really think you're going to do it, right? Um, so I want to say this right here. Um, in Proverbs 21 and 9, it says it's better to live on the corner of a roof then share a house with a contentious wife. But let's broaden that. It's better to live in peace alone than with a contentious partner. That's my scripture, okay? I came up with that one on my own. Someone who refuses to communicate, refuses to work with you, is being contentious. And that's a huge red flag. They are the problem, and this needs to be addressed. Some people think it takes two to tango or two to dance when it comes to toxicity, but that is not true. It takes two to create something beautiful and harmony. But one person can destroy the whole thing by being stubborn, lazy, and uncooperative. A relationship should uplift you, make your partner feel better, uh, and make your life better overall, okay? Uh, not harder. It's about practicality, okay? The kind that gets you through the tough times. Uh, it's great to have emotional love, connection, uh, intimacy, a partner you can share affection with and happiness with. But if it's not practical, family, if you two are not going to work together to make both of your lives and future better, then it's kind of like an elementary relationship, right? A childish, immature relationship. Uh, Proverbs 27, I think 15 through 16, a quarrelsome wife is like the dripping of a leaking, uh, a, a leaking roof in a rainstorm. OK, restraining her is like restraining the wind um, or grasping oil within the hand. Now, let's replace wife with partner because this applies to anyone who refuses to work, okay? Being with someone who refuses to communicate or contribute is like trying to stop a storm with your bare hands. It's impossible and it's exhausting. Um, here are my final thoughts, family. If you find yourself with a partner who will not communicate, who will not step up, who will not do their part, you have to ask yourself, is this the relationship that you want? The relationships are, are, are not just about the joy and the comfort. Uh, they're more about practicality about two people coming together to create something greater. If you're doing worse with this person, then you would, you, then you would be alone. Then, then you would be alone. Then it might be time to reevaluate the situation. As the saying goes, family, I can do bad all by myself. That's real talk. Two heads supposed to be better than one. Two bodies supposed to be better than one. If you have another person you're working with and they are working against you, they are making your life worse, not better. If you find yourself in this situation, you have to ask yourself, is this the type of relationship that can carry you into the future and um, provide for your legacy? When a situation is like that, it will not. And if you're not married, you still have time to walk away from the relationship. Ladies, never get yourself into arguing with a man the way she's doing. He's not your child. Even when he fails, that's not the way to approach it. You have to learn to be able to use your femininity to get what you need from that man. I always say your meek, your weakness is not a meek, your meekness is not a weakness. Okay. And potentially she's learned this style of confrontation 
from from per, from par, from parenting, right? From the people who who raised her, and so she's just going to repeat what she knows. But when it comes to dealing with adults, it's just not the way to handle it. They are an adult. You really can't lecture them or fuss at them into doing what you need done, and you can't punish them. Um, so you got to be able to have an effective conversation where you're both listening to one another. And in this in this particular conversation. Um, he should have been listening to her gripe first because she did ask something of him and he should have communicated it back uh, on why he didn't clean instead of just saying, can I get a break? She is making all kind of points when she says, I filled out your resumes for you. What he says is you wanted to do that. What? Right. So she's having to fill out the resumes for you. This shows that she's supportive of you. OK, uh, she's trying to encourage you to get out there and, and, and get back on your feet Um She's willing to do whatever it takes, even more than what's required of her to help you do that in writing your resume, right? And you're not even going to the interviews. If this is my daughter, I'm saying you need to leave that relationship. You do not have a provider right there. That's not a provider. That's an excuse maker. Men go through hard times, but that behavior shows underdevelopment. And if he had a family, they would all suffer because of him and that, and that behavior. Leave. But don't sit there and fuss at him. You understand? Hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from. In order to get the best out of a person, you got to be able to speak to them, right? In a way that gets them to move and motivate them, right? I look at it like a racehorse, right? In this case, the woman is the jockey, okay? The, the man is the horse. He's the provider. He's the protector. You look, he's going to get your family somewhere farther, right? And you have to ride him. This means you have to be very light, so so you're not weighing him down right so talking to him any kind of way being quarrelsome being contentious carries a lot of weight okay and that will definitely kill a man's motivation okay so how do you encourage this racehorse without beating it because if you beat it now you have an injured horse right if you jerk if you jerk on his neck and try to pull him and force him he's much stronger than you you're not going to move him that way you have to be able to speak to this horse in a way that makes him want to run for you, that makes him want to move forward for you. So this means you got to nurture him. You have to groom him. You have to feed him. You have to stroke his ego. You have to pet him. Am I saying that your man should be treated like a child and baby? No. But what I'm saying is in order for you to motivate somebody to want to do something on your behalf, you have to encourage them family, okay? This is the same way if a man wants the most out of his woman, talking to her any kind of way is not going to do it. He would reassure her. He would uplift her. He would speak life into her. And this may make her want to do those things. So if he came home, ladies, your man comes home. He expected you to clean. You didn't feel like cleaning that day. You felt lazy for some reason. You just didn't do it. And here he comes in the door talking about the mess that he sees. Now, you know you're supposed to clean, but you weren't feeling your best, right? Would you rather him come at you like this? Like you're lazy, uh, calling out all the things that's in the house that's dirty or whatever? Would that bring out the best of you and make you say, oh, you're right, let me get up and do that? Or would him coming to you and sitting down beside you and saying, hey, babe, are you okay? Uh, well, I'm not really feeling that good today. I'm tired, been having a lot on my mind. Um, what if he goes, hey, babe, listen, I understand that. What do you say, man, you both work together to get the place cleaned up? And then I'll give you a massage and we can talk about whatever's troubling you. Would, would that help you? Would, that, would, that, would, you, would you want to get up for your man and go ahead and, and help out then? Or, or would you move better if he just lectures you into doing it? Right? Let me know in the comments, family, what would get... What would motivate you to more be effective for your partner in a time like that? Would you rather be fussed at whenever you fail to do what they ask of you? Or would you rather be encouraged? Okay? Let me know in the comments, okay? Be evolution. Be the change that you want to see. No candle loses its flame from lighting another. And if you were to ever uh, find yourself in the middle of chaos, it is in that chaos that you find yourself. Okay? Remember, relationships should be less about being uh, about who's right or wrong. It's more about how can we get back to harmony? Okay? How can we get back to harmony where we are working together to create this future that we want? If we sit in here arguing, nobody's doing the work. 
We're just sitting here arguing, stagnated. Both partners should be trying to figure out the best way to get back to harmony and deal with this conversation without it coming to an argument. Because that's what kills our relationships. You ever notice you could be doing perfectly fine with a person? Let y'all get into a heated debate or an argument. In moments, you're ready to throw the whole relationship away. And that conversation, if you were to look at that conversation, to isolate that conversation, it's not worth breaking up. It's not even worth an argument. But having that conversation, because both of you could be immature, you guys are reaching in the past and finding all these different arguments and rewriting narratives on things that, that, that happened and now you're changing it, um, telling things a different way than it happened, going into insults, deflections, over-talking. And now all of a sudden it's like, yo, I'm done with you. I'm done with you too. Now you're, now you're talking about breaking up, right? I know you've been there. So you want to avoid that. Get the harmony. This means isolate this issue that you have. Talk about it and it alone. And both of you work together to resolve the issue. It's not about your wrong. Admit your wrong. If they have the accountability, the level of accountability to admit where they failed and talk about what's moving, what's, what's, what's going to happen moving forward, that's even better. But oftentimes, like this, you just need to talk it out. And sometimes she might, she, she may have to help them. If you come home, the house dirty, your wife hadn't cleaned, all this stuff is going on, you may have to help her. It doesn't mean that this goes on every single day. But remember, life is about seasons. If you're with someone that you don't feel like you can step up like that for, you should question if you're in the right type of relationship, family. That being said, peace to you all. Let me know your thoughts. Like, share, and subscribe, family. Okay? Your support is appreciated. Peace. Goodness, look at this. Oh, oh, goodness gracious, babe. Are you okay? Sure, why are you asking? Because I asked if you would clean up while I was at work, and it's a mess. It's a mess in here, it's a mess in the living room bathroom things are all on the floor what's wrong you didn't feel up to it you kind of been out of it can't get a job not really feeling myself like that. oh man so listen what i'll do is i'm gonna help you okay i'm gonna help you clean this up mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna give you a massage mm -hmm. and then after I do a little something, see if I can get your spirits up. <laughs> okay. All right, deal. All right, baby. <clears throat> well, are we going? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>